Good evening. You're watching the news tonight. Your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell, and these are the headlines that we're tracking tonight. 82 people killed after a massive explosion inside a building in Jhabu and Madhya Pradesh. The state orders probe after police confirms explosives behind the tragedy. Back to the drawing board for India and Bihar, Jitan Ram Manji says there's no agreement for seat sharing for the October polls. DG level border talks between India and Pakistan conclude. Both sides sign agreement to enhance communication for peace at the borders. Two Indians among the 107 killed in the crane accident in Mecca and Saudi Arabia. The country orders an inquiry into the disaster. And Leander Pace and Martina Hingis script history at the US Open Mixed Doubles become the first pair since 1969 to win three Grand Slam titles in the same year. An early morning tragedy, at least 82 people were killed and more than 50 injured in a high-intensity blast in the Jhabua district of Madhya Pradesh. The explosion took place inside a packed restaurant in the Petlawa town of Jhabua when hundreds of people were having breakfast there. The exact cause of the blast is yet to be ascertained, but initial reports suggest that it was triggered by explosives kept in an adjacent building. Horrific images of an early morning explosion that ripped through a packed restaurant in Petlawar town of Madhya Pradesh. The impact of the high-intensity blast was such that two adjacent buildings were reduced to rubble within seconds. Dozens of people, both inside and outside the compound, were blown to pieces. Earlier, the explosion was believed to have been caused by a cooking gas cylinder. But later, the police confirmed that explosives, mainly gelatin sticks used for mining, kept in an adjacent building, triggered the high-intensity blast. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed grief over the tragedy. In a tweet message, he said, I'm extremely pained at the loss of lives due to the cylinder blast in Chabua. My deepest condolences to the families of the deceased. Wish all those injured a speedy recovery. The Madhya Pradesh government is monitoring the situation closely. Home Minister Radnath Singh also expressed condolences. I State Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan announced compensation for the next of kin of the deceased. घटना दुखद है जिसने मुझे अंदर तक खिलाया है उस घटना के कारणों की जांच भी की जाएगी लेकिन अभी उस दुर्घटना में जिन लोगों ने अपनी जान गवाई है उनके परिजनों को दो दो लाख रुपए की सहायता राशि दी जाएगी an NDRF team has been dispatched for relief operations. The state government has also ordered a high-level inquiry into the incident. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in an early train mishap this morning, at least two people were killed, while eight others suffered injuries after nine coaches of the Duranto Express derailed in Karnataka. The incident happened around 2.30 in the morning at the Marthu railway station in Gulbarga district near the Maharashtra-Karnataka border. Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu has ordered an investigation to ascertain the cause of the accident. The railways has announced a compensation of 2 lakh rupees for the families of those killed, 50,000 rupees for those grievously injured and 25,000 rupees for those with minor injuries. We have moved the injured persons in the Gul to uh, Gulbarga Hospital. Our relief and rescue operation has was moved right in time in a big way. Our medical relief trains reached both from Wadi and Sholapur at the accident site. And on the other hand, in Himachal Pradesh, three foreign nationals were killed while ten others were injured when a charter special toy train derailed 
at Taksal near Parwanu in Solon district of Himachal Pradesh. The accident occurred at 12.55 uh, 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 this afternoon on the Shimla Kalka narrow gauge route. The toy train was on its way from Kalka station to Shimla. The cause of the accident could not be immediately ascertained, but experts uh, suspect that it might have occurred due to overspeeding. An inquiry has been ordered into the derailment incident as well. News now from the Bihar Assembly polls in our special verdict 2015. Hindustan Awam Morcha chief Jitan Ram Manji seems to have put a spanner in the works as far as the seat-sharing agreement for the Bihar Assembly polls is concerned for the NDA. Even as the BJP was set to make an announcement earlier this evening, Manji said that there was no agreement yet. BJP President Amit Shah met LJP chief Ram Vilas Paswan late last night and is believed to have convinced him that parties should contest seats where they have a strong base. But with Manji now making it clear that he was not satisfied with what was being offered, it is back to the drawing board for the BJP-led alliance. We think that there is a lot of offer that we are not satisfied with. There is a lot of seats in the number of seats. We hope that we have a lot of confidence in the Bharatiya Janata Party. And especially our leaders have been very confident. We have been very confident in our leaders. Well, moving on now, India and Pakistan have agreed to increase communication between the armies of the two sides to ensure peace at the border. On the concluding day of the DG-level border talks, an agreement was reached to stop firing at posts on the international border. The next DG-level talks will be held early next year. On the concluding day of DG-level border talks between India and Pakistan in Delhi, the two sides inked new confidence-building measures and signed a joint record of discussions that were held. An agreement has been made to jointly resolve sensitive issues like ceasefire violations and cross-border infiltration. The two sides have agreed on timely exchange of information to ensure tranquility at the border. There has been an agreement to stop firing at posts at the international border and not hamper renovation work at posts that already exist. Agreement has also been reached to not initiate retaliatory fire unless all possible means of communication have been exhausted. Two cases of fire violations are one across the international border, which is looked out with, uh, by BSF. Many times they are on the international border. Pe hote. These crucial talks that came in the wake of the cancellation of NSA-level dialogue was held in a cordial and smooth manner, and all issues concerning the two sides along the Indo-Pak border were taken up and addressed. The next DG-level meet will take place in the first half of 2016 in Islamabad. With inputs from Akhilesh Suman, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, a top militant of the Lashkar Atoyva was killed in an encounter with security forces in Pulma Omar district of Jammu and Kashmir today. The militant was carrying a reward of 10 lakh rupees on his head. A resident of Kakapura area of Pulwama, he was wanted for the killing of eight army men in Haidarpura in June 2013. He was in the list of most wanted militants for carrying out several attacks on the army and the police in Jammu and Kashmir. He was killed in a gun battle with the joint team of the army and the police. Now, army veterans held a rally in the national capital to press for their demands after they rejected the government's proposals in the one rank one pension scheme. They've put forth a seven-point dissent and have said that the government should implement these demands if they're serious about honouring soldiers. Senik Ekta rally organised in Delhi by army veterans demanding honest and truthful justice. The veterans have rejected the OROP scheme announced by the government, though they welcomed its decision to make the much-awaited announcement. सात सीरियस विसंगतियां हैं ये एक, एक ऐसी स्टोरी बना देनी कि सरकार अगर दे देगी तो दूसरे मानेंगे प्राणी दे देगी दूसरे मानेंगे भाई देश के सैनिक किसी और वर्ग के साथ उनका कोई कंपैरिजन नहीं है there were, however, cracks in the United Front of Ex-Servicemen movement that has been the umbrella organization under which various ex-servicemen groups have been protesting for the last three months. Some of the factions dissociated themselves from the rally that began at 10.30 a.m. today. I think after 42 years, first time, the basic concept of OROP has been executed. 
veterans have put forward seven points of dissent with the government. The veterans demand that those who take premature retirement should fall within the scheme. 2013 should be used to fix the base. A five-member commission must come out with a report on implementation of OROP within one month. Pension revision must happen every year and the scheme should be independent of the Central Pay Commission. If the new government gives us time for 30 September, we will go to Bihar. Where there will be an election, we will rally. Whatever the government is, the government is saying that we are going to be a fight for the government. The government is going to be a fight for the government. Opposition Congress that had questioned the timing of the announcement now says that the renewed protest is a failure of the government. Today they have created a situation whereby the war veterans are to, today again on war path. It is a miserable failure of this government. The current impasse now means that the wait that seemed to have ended after a 42-year wait is far from over. With inputs from Mohammed Fateh Tipu, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for us to take a very quick break right now. Coming up on the other side, Haryana has become the fifth BJP ruled state to ban the sale of meat during the upcoming Jain festival. More on that on the other side. Live Rajya Sabha session. News, views, reports, and analysis you can trust on social media. Subscribe, follow, like Rajya Sabha Television. Very warm welcome to a brand new edition of World Panorama with me, Frank Pereira. Barack Obama has been elected on the basis that I will no longer take America into wars, and in fact, quite the opposite, I will pull America out of wars. According to the Indian government, fishermen are not at fault. The US intervention in Iraq set the stage for exacerbation of these conflicts, and then the intervention in Syria. Watch World Panorama at these times on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Now, Haryana has become the fifth BJP rule state in the country to enforce a meat ban along with Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. The Municipal Council of Fatehabad District, Haryana, has asked all slaughterhouses to remain shut from the 11th to the 19th of September in view of the Jain festival of fasting, Pariyushan. Similar orders have been issued in other districts as well. The ban has kicked up widespread criticism across states with activists and opposition parties alleging that the government had no right to tell the people what to eat. However, as criticism mounted, the center's urban local bodies department were quick to clarify uh, that uh, the order was of an advisory nature and was not binding. Time now to take a look at all the other national news stories in Nationwide. The BJP-affiliated AVBP has come uh, as for the second consecutive year, beaten NSUI to win all four seats in the student union elections of Delhi University. The Congress-backed NSUI stood second in three posts, including that of President Joint Secretary and Secretary, while uh, Amadi Party student Wing came second for the post of Vice President. The 10th World Hindi Conference in Bhopal has concluded. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh rewarded exceptional Hindi writers. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Raman Singh also attended the conference. The 10th World Conference took place in India after the gap of uh, 32 years. Delhi government has issued notices to two private hospitals after the parents of a 7-year-old boy committed suicide following the death of their child due to suspected dengue. The parents were allegedly denied admission by the two hospitals. Police have invest initiated an inquest proceeding in the case. Some international news now, and at least 107 people, including two Indians, were killed in a crane accident in Mecca in Saudi Arabia on Friday. 
The accident took place less than two weeks before Islam's annual Hajj pilgrimage, raising questions yet again about the safety standards uh, employed for the two and a half million pilgrims that are expected to attend the Hajj pilgrimage. Two Indians were among the 107 people killed after a massive construction crane crashed into Mecca's Grand Mosque on Friday. The Ministry of External Affairs has identified one woman to be from Palakkad in Kerala, while the identity of the second deceased person is yet to be established. The MEA further said that the Hajj pilgrimage would continue as planned. In this accident, 15 Indian pilgrims have been injured and two have unfortunately lost their lives. These two Indian pilgrims were from the state of Kerala. Our Consul General and other senior officers from the Indian Consulate in Jeddah are in continuous touch with those injured. Statement from the Mecca administration said a huge red crane smashed into a part of the Grand Mosque, sending down tons of cement and debris onto people either praying or walking through. At least 238 people are reported to be in the accident. Saudi authorities have ordered a probe. An uncle Ta'azi. سيدي خادم الحرمين الشريفين وسمو ولي العهد وجميع المسؤولين في هذه الدولة لأسر. While Saudi officials claim strong winds and heavy rains caused the crane to fall, Hajj, one of the largest religious gatherings in the world, has been prone to disasters in the past, mainly from stampedes. 340 people were killed and 290 injured in a stampede in 2006 as safety standards and measures to control the crowd proved to be inadequate. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. As the migrant crisis in Europe worsens, Hungary has decided to impose tough laws to prevent more refugees from entering its borders. The new laws will come into force from the 15th of September. The measures come even as Hungary has been criticised for the way it has handled the crisis so far. The European Union plan to impose refugee quotas has been rejected by at least four countries. Hungary, Czech Republic, Slovakia and Poland have refused to support the proposal. Hungary threatens to crack down on the refugees as thousands cross into its borders daily. As it refuses the plan, Hungary is already facing criticism over its handling of the refugees. The government has been accused of gross mismanagement and negligence in housing, feeding and processing the migrants. We came from Hungary and it was much more like Syria. The situation is so bad. The whole world needs to do something to this Hungarian government. They put us in jails. We were for a week there. So little food, like one of this little bread in the morning and one in, in the in at the night. The situation is so bad. The, the kids, all the kids, if you can see them here, they all have cold. They put us in jails, they treat us like criminals, maybe like animals, I don't know. It's more likely like animals. Ja, das, die Leidtragenden sind die Kinder natürlich, die mit Verkühlungen zu kämpfen haben, beziehungsweise die Erwachsene, halt, wo halt das Gehwerk, die Füße halt sehr in Mitleidenschaft gezogen sind. Schlechtes Schuhwerk, Nässe, doch die Nächte etwas frischer. Unfazed by all the criticism, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has threatened an even harder line. He says his government intends to catch, convict and imprison people who continue to penetrate its new border barriers as part of Get Tough Border Security measures scheduled to begin Tuesday. Ugye egy hete zajlik egy fölvilágosító és tájékoztató kampány egész Szerbia területén, ahol tájékoztatjuk az illegális határátlépési szándékkal közeledőket, hogy ezt ne tegyék, mert az eddigi szabályok megváltoztak Magyarországon. Meanwhile, as Hungary plans to get tough on refugees, huge crowds are rushing out of the country. Crowds gathered at the Keleti railway station in Budapest, waiting to make the next leg of their journey. These scores of refugees and migrants are now moving on to Austria and Germany. Germany is taking in the most numbers with 450,000 migrants seeking asylum. The country expects another 800,000 this year. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time now for some more international news and global buzz. 
Singapore's ruling party roamed to a strong election victory on Friday and increased its share of the vote and seat tally as it brushed off an opposition challenge in the city-state's city most hotly contested polls. The People's Action Party won 83 out of the 89 seats in the expanded parliament. A rally was held celebrating the party's win in the group's representation constituency from which Prime Minister Lee uh, Hussein Lung was contesting. Turkey has uh, lifted a week-long curfew imposed in the predominantly Kurdish uh, southeastern city of Sisre. The city was sealed off since last Friday after the Turkish army launched an operation against Kurdish militants there. The locals there have complained of shortages of water and electricity amid the operation against the PKK. Civilian casualties have also been reported. At least 15 militants have been killed by a U.S. drone strike in Afghanistan's Gomal district on Wednesday. The attack was part of an intensifying drone campaign against Pakistani militants in Afghanistan. The 15 militants belong to the Pakistani Taliban faction, which claimed responsibility for the massacre of more than 130 pupils at an army-run school in northwestern city of Peshawar last December. The strikes come a week after Pakistan and Afghanistan agreed to end a blame game over a spate of militant attacks and work to resort, uh, restore trust. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe arrived in the city of Joso today to assess the damage caused by one of the worst floods to hit Japan that killed at least three people. Abe surveyed the river Kinu, which burst its bank on Thursday, sweeping houses off their foundation. Search teams using boats and helicopters resume looking for the missing and stranded, while thousands are awaited to return to their homes as the waters have started to slowly recede. Well, time for us to take a very quick break now. On the other side, all the sports news. The BCCI moves the Supreme Court to seek clarity over N. Srinivasan's role in Indian cricket. More on that on the other side. India star shining in global affairs. The professional army of any country does not have faith, piety, and jihad in the name of God. From regional power to assertive global leader. Sri Lanka denies that uh, these violations took place. We want India to be a superpower. We have been doing everything for decades, and we have been giving to India everything best we have. Experts debate the nation's foreign policy. We should not have any political preference of ours so far as Nepal is concerned. Taliban were the creatures of Pakistan. Whatever people may say, they were created by Pakistan. India's world with Bharat Bhushan on Rajya Sabha Television. to a complete roundup of news from India and abroad. Politics, strategy, business, sports. Keen analysis to kickstart your day. Watch Breakfast News weekdays at 8 a.m. on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back here watching the news tonight. Some spots now, and Leander Pace and Martina Hingis have created history by winning the U.S. Open Mixed Doubles title, becoming the first pair since 1969 to win three Grand Slam Mixed Doubles titles in the same year. In the women's singles, it will be an all-Italian final after Roberta Vinci ended Serena Williams' hopes of securing a calendar slam, and in the men's draw, it will be the battle of the top two seeds in the final. Leanne Pace won a historic 17th Grand Slam title, winning the US Open Mixed Doubles title with Swiss partner Martina Hingis. 6-4, 3-6, The fourth seeded pair edged past unseeded Americans Bethany Mattox Sands and Sam Query, 6-4, 3-6, 10-7, in a tricky final to win their third Grand Slam together this year. My partner is just uh, not only a legend of the game on the court, as you all know, but I know, I know her off the court as one of my best friends. And uh, I couldn't have done this without Martina. And to do it with one of your best friends just 
makes it really, really special. So. With nine Grand Slam mixed doubles titles, the 42-year-old now has the highest number of mixed doubles titles in the Open era, surpassing compatriot Mahesh Bhupati's record of eight. Delight to see the two of them partner up and be so successful this year. Three quarters of the majors. In the women's singles, Italian Roberta Vinci caused one of the biggest upsets in recent years, beating world number one Serena Williams in the semi-final. The 43rd seed came from a set down to win 2 6 6 4 6 4 and end Serena's hope of a calendar slam. Yes, it's incredible. I know it's, uh, so many, so many things in my mind. This uh, was an incredible match. Roberta Vinci will play compatriot Flavia Panetta in an all-Italian final on Saturday after the 26th seed outplayed Romanian second seed Simona Halep in the first semi-final. This will be the first Grand Slam final between two Italian players since the Open era began in 1968. The U.S. Open Championship match, defeating the number two player in the world. The men's final, on the other hand, will feature the top two seeds battling it out for the title. Both Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer cruised into the finals with commanding wins. 17 times champion Federer continued his sublime form to defeat countryman Stan Wawrinka 6-4-6-3-6-1. Really tough to beat, plus it's tough mentally. He doesn't give you anything and uh, I like that challenge uh, and uh, I'll be ready for it. World number one Novak Djokovic demolished defending champion Marin Silic 6-0-6-1-6-2 to reach his fourth Grand Slam final this year. Love one and two. The men's final on Sunday will be a repeat of the Wimbledon final earlier this year where the Serb triumphed over Federer in four sets. But it will be a tough battle this time as the Swiss is yet to lose a set in the tournament. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time now for all the other sporting action in Sports Beat. The Indian women's hockey team lost to Japan 3-2 in a penalty shootout in the semi-final of the Junior Asia Cup. India got off to a near-perfect start with uh, Deep Grace Eka giving uh, the team an early lead with a penalty corner goal in the fourth minute of the game, but Japan equalised soon in the same half. Renu Yadav made it 2-1 for India in the 25th minute at the half-time mark. Japan brought the match back on level terms through a goal from Hirara and in the, 50, in the 57th minute of the game. The BCCI moved the Supreme Court to cl see clarity over N. Srinivasan's role in the board. The board asked the Apex Court if the former president could attend its meetings. According to reports, the BCCI is ready to drag the ICC chairman to court over the conflict of interest issue vis-à-vis -vis his shareholding pattern in the Chennai Super Kings. It's also claimed that after seeking legal advice, the BCCI has already drafted a petition to prove that the incumbent ICC chairman, Srinivasan, still has a conflict of interest. India ended their Commonwealth Youth Games campaign at the fifth spot with an overall tally with 19 medals behind Australia, South Africa, England and Malaysia. India won two out of the four goals on offer on the concluding day of the fifth Commonwealth Youth Games. Indian woman grappler Geeta Fogart lost a nil 10 to a Turkish wrestler Elif in the repechage round of the 58 kilogram at the World Wrestling Championships. Fogart got a chance to compete for a bronze medal in the repechage round after Eko reached the final, but Elif eventually finished with the bronze medal. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.